were you thinking, Candace? How could you say that crap on the internet? Those words hit me in the stomach. That was not the reaction I had expected. The night before, I had made top 10 in an international speaking competition. I was so excited, I was on cloud nine. The next morning, I raced to my computer. I was excited to see what my family and friends had to say. Of course, they'd be congratulating me. It was such a great speech. As I started to read the messages, my eyes filled with tears and my heart sank. Candace, what were you thinking? How could you say those things? What will people think? As I continued reading the messages from the people that I thought would be supporting me, the common theme was, Candace, these things are best left unsaid. Best left unsaid. For who? See, back in June, on this very stage, I shared the painful story of my childhood, something that I've been hiding from for over 40 years. My mom left me when I was two years old. Now, I don't remember that moment, but I do remember a lifetime of feeling abandoned and rejected. Her court-ordered visits began four years later, and those years were even worse. They were filled with physical and emotional abuse, like the never-ending beatings, because I didn't fold the towels right or vacuum to her standards and the many other innocent mistakes a child makes. There was also the sexual abuse at the hands of her boyfriend. He started out as my protector against all of her abuse. And when he became my predator, that was more than any seven-year-old should ever have to bear. This was a difficult subject for me to talk about. However, I felt in my whole body that it had to come out. It was eating me alive. After that speech though, I was so proud of myself. I finally had the courage to speak up and speak about the impact my childhood had on me. I was able to heal, to close that chapter of my life without being scared of the backlash and abuse that would take place. I felt like I had stepped into my power. But the days following that speech, they were filled with rejection and pain from some of my closest family members. I saw the looks of disappointment and hurt on their faces. But why? Why were they mad? Why were they upset? My speech was truly a tribute to Miss Daisy, my grandmother who had raised me, who had given me security and love during a very dark period in my life. Maybe. Maybe they knew and they didn't have the courage to speak up and now they felt guilty. Maybe they didn't want to believe what I had to say because now they would have to accept responsibility that their suspicions were correct. Maybe, just maybe, my truth was too uncomfortable and embarrassing for them to hear. I'm not gonna lie, their reactions hurt me. Made me angry actually. Because once again, I felt like I was being shut down, silenced for speaking up and speaking my truth. But I won't be silenced, not this time. Is keeping others comfortable and protected more important than my healing? Is their pride more important than my truth? Is my abuser's reputation more important than my self-preservation? No, hell no. But what I do know to be true, it was all worth it. I received so many messages from others thanking me for having the courage to speak about my childhood and the impact it had on my life. By speaking my truth, I was able to make an impact on others that also suffered in silence. I was able to give voice to the voiceless and I allowed others to bring their feelings to the surface. Just by sharing my painful truth, my story, my voice, I made an impact. We all have the opportunity to use our voices to make an impact. 
Let's all keep speaking up and speaking our truth. Let's stop silencing ourselves. Because when we put our truth first, we inspire others around us. And we actually give them permission to do the same. And by doing this, we can make the impact that we were meant to. Because in the end, you don't get to silence the truth.